We're the first generation to feel the sting of climate change, and we're the last that can do something about it. I'm Jay Inslee, and I'm running for president because I'm the only candidate who will make defeating climate change our nation's number one priority. We can do this. Join our movement. This is our moment. That was Washington State's Governor Jay Inslee announcing he's the latest Democrat looking to take back the White House from Donald Trump. He's making climate change a focal point of his campaign. But given how ugly the last election was, how's he going to handle the political climate he's about to step into? Let's find out. Please welcome Governor Jay Inslee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They, they, they agree with you. I mean, a lot of... The, I appreciate that you're doing this because that's my number one issue, mm -hmm. and I really am happy that you're doing it. But how are you going to differentiate yourself from the rest of the Democrats who also say they want to change the climate? They want to work on that. I'm going to get joy in the White House so we can have a climate change president. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> we need this. Well, look, this is really simple. I, I've had a lot of success in our state. We've got the best economy in the country. We've got great pam, uh, paid family leave, big minimum wage increase. Yeah. We've had the biggest educational funding increase. We've legalized marijuana, a lot of success. But the reason fundamentally I'm running is because we need a president who will say this, uh, America is going to defeat climate change. It is our destiny and we will do this. And I'm convinced of this, but to do this, we have to have a leader who will say fundamentally and unequivocally that this is the number one priority in the United States. It has to be because of the nature of this challenge. This is the greatest peril we have, but it is also the greatest promise. Look, I went to Paradise, California a couple right. months ago and saw a town of 25,000 people. It looked like Europe after World War II. And when you stand there and you see the damage that we face and our grandchildren face, it demands the United Nation to confront this. And I think, look, I'm a child of the 60s. I remember when John F. Kennedy said, we're going to the moon in 10 years and bring somebody back. And we went because that spark, that bugle of inspiration united the country to a new mission statement. And I believe this is a new mission statement that is going to grow jobs okay. all over the United States. So, you know, That's why I'm running. Okay. Look, Joy, this is her number one issue. I right. think everyone in this room cares about the air we one? breathe. Well, I would say yeah. it's my, because if we can't breathe, what's the point it's of number one? A good economy. Oh. Yeah. And most but, Americans, uh, health care is number one, and right after it, it's climate change. Yeah. But for a lot of people, it's still the economy. Uh, right. And so I'm here listening to this, and I'm wondering, do you really want to win, or are you trying to get attention for this one issue? Because you're, it's not just about beating Democrats. You've got to beat Trump. Right. And you saw him at CPAC. Whether you agree with him or not, he knows how to get people riled up. He gets headlines. He gets attention. The media is always talking about him. Climate change, yeah. that's not the number one issue for many, many people in this country. So how are you going to make waves on that? Well, I want a lot of things in life, but what I, I want most in life is to defeat Donald Trump and make him a blip in this. Here, here. So how do you Here's how we're going to do this. Here's how we're going to do this. Look. Your comment was very interesting. <laughs> Climate change is an economic growth engine. It is an ability to grow jobs. Today, clean energy jobs in the United States are growing twice as fast as the rest of the U.S. economy. The number one job creation rate today is in solar panel installer. The number two is in wind turbine technology. When Donald Trump said that, you know, we're not going to have toasters and TVs if we have wind power. That's just simply, I don't moronic is the best way I could say it. Because in my state, we now have a $6 billion wind turbine industry. Wow. And when I turn on the view in the morning, it always comes on. <laughs> it works really, really well. Mm -hmm. So he is just such a <laughs> pessimist and a narrow-minded thinker. He needs to get with the rest of Americans that understand the country that sent a man to the moon can, we can develop a clean energy economy. It. That's what we can do. I fundamentally believe it. So that's my, my message. This but, is not don't, a, but don't you need more than that if I'm you're sorry? running? Don't you need more than that as your main platform if you're going to run against a President Trump? Yes, we're going to talk about the economic growth inherent in clean energy. And I co-authored a book about this over 10 years ago. I helped uh, do the U.S. Climate Alliance. So I've been at this for about two decades. But I want to talk to people about the fact that this is a health issue, mm -hmm. right? This is the health of our children. Our children in the state of Washington could not go outside and play last mm -hmm. year. We had to shut down public pools because the forests were all burning and our could, kids could not breathe. We had the worst air quality in the world. We're better than that. This is a national security measure issue. Uh, Trump will not listen to his generals. I have, and I've, I've talked to, to uh, intelligence officials. This is a national security threat because it's going to drive mass migrations that de destabilize governments around the world. So this is not just an environmental issue. 
This is an issue that touches everything we hold dear. And I, and I just tell you, I, I take this personally. I got three grandkids. I've officially designated them the cutest kids in Washington. <laughs> and uh, I am dedicated that those kids do not live in a degraded world. That's my commitment. And I'm going to get up every day making sure they get that. All right. Maybe I am just a unicorn from another planet, but <laughs> climate change doesn't even hit my top 30 of how I vote for somebody. So I do think I am on this panel to say, this isn't what's selling me on you beating Trump. And I say that with respect. Mm -hmm. What's also not selling me on beating Trump is the New Green Deal, which all of the 2020 contenders have endorsed. Mm -hmm. um, it would cost $93 trillion or to every person in this room, $600,000 per each of your households. Do you think that plan, thank you, ma'am, is practical, <laughs> or have you endorsed it, or do you have another option? Because when I hear that an average American is going to have to spend $600,000 for a new Green right. Deal, you can understand how people like me don't think that's logical. Well, this is a lot like the death panels you heard about in Obamacare. The Republicans mm -hmm. talked about death panels. Yeah. We didn't have death panels, and we don't have $600,000 costs. Mm -hmm. This is a, a thing that I think has been helpful in our discussion in a variety of ways. Number one, we're talking about climate change. That is a value. But we're also you, talking about high ambition. Could you give an example ambition. to just the average person in here, how, mm -hmm. how they can help, where it, do, it doesn't sound so irrational. I mean, we're talking about $51 trillion, the elimination of planes, uh, the elimination of cows, a railway, no planes. I guess nobody can go to Hawaii anymore. It doesn't sound that rational to me. Uh, it isn't rational because those are the things that so the Donald Trump deal said. Is not we rational. are not going to eliminate cars. We are not going to eliminate trains. We're going to have what I have in my driveway today, which is a blue GM Bolt made in Michigan with American workers. That's what we're going to have, OK? We're going to have, we're going to have televisions powered by solar and, and wind energy. We're going to have potentially ways to fly airplanes on biofuels. Hmm. We have flown a Boeing 737 ac across the Atlantic Ocean now, and biofuels developed in my state. The point is that when we think about our opportunities here, we can't be so narrow-minded. Look, you know, I grew up in the, the, the time of rotary phones, and now we got cell phones. We're going to have the greatest transformation of our econ economy that you can hardly imagine if we unleash this potential can of I, America. Can I just interject really quick? Yeah. I understand you're talking the talk and walking the walk, mm -hmm. but a lot of advocates don't. Ocasio-Cortez's campaign spent $30,000 on 1,500, excuse me, 1,050 Uber rides. Uh, Al Gore's home electricity <laughs> was 21 times the national average in 2017, even after a green overhaul. Leonardo DiCaprio prives, flies on private jets, including to an accept an environmental award in 2016. A lot of environmentalists don't walk the walk, they just talk the talk, and then they want the average American to spend 600 thousand dollars in their household and none of this it just adds said up that wasn't me. really true but no. but, I'm, but the, that's what's proposed on the new green deal actually that is not what is proposed <laughs> let's get this straight that is not proposed in the new green deal okay well, then well, I, I guess, just want to be real straight about this then i guess okay. governor you've got no problems with voters then we don't we and, go. and let me i have to cut you off sir. And you i hate to do it to you but i'll be we, back we have a time <laughs> yeah. restriction yeah. here so i have to say thank you very much you are walking the walk and talking the talk and i'm right there with you all right thanks to governor jay